Sneak preview time. Today's live streaming video is going to give you a little bit of insight as to what I'm posting next Tuesday. Normally, we do a live streaming on Fridays. I'm also bringing a little bonus sneak preview today of what I'm posting for a blog on Tuesday because the blog is already written. I stayed up like three, four hours yesterday, and wrote a 2,000 plus word document just on the IVDR risk management requirements. You might say, what's the big deal with IVDR risk management requirements? You follow 14971. What's the big deal? Uh, maybe the EN standard? Is that it? Is that the secret? No. It's a lot more detailed than that because there are deviations between what is stated in 14971 and what's stated in the IVDR. So you have to go very thoroughly through the IVDR and make sure you cover all the requirements in there and how you display or provide that information on your risk management process in the technical file changes. So you, you need to know where the information goes. We talked a couple of weeks ago in a live posting about four different types of risk management or risk analysis that you would perform. Where do those four different types of risk analysis go? They don't all go in the same place. There isn't just put them in the risk management spot and we're done. There's a lot to it. So here we go. Number one, you need to be making sure that you're referencing the EN version in the amended harmonized version here. So EN ISO 14971 2019 Amendment 11 2021. Yeah, that's a mouthful. Um, and in the blog posting that we're having on Tuesday, there are links where you can buy just the amendment. So you don't have to pay, pay for the whole thing over again. And we give you the really inexpensive one from the Estonian Standards Organization. So just click on the hyperlink and purchase that next Tuesday. Number two, um, where are the requirements? We just explain that. So Article 10, Annex 1, Annex 2. There are 228 places in the IVDR where it talks about risk. You want the ones that are specific to risk management in your risk management file and documenting it for your technical file it can be found in Article 10, Annex 1, Annex 2. Uh, technically, it's also an Annex 3. But the big piece that everybody thinks about is just Annex 2, and there's other places where you have to cover it. Next, how to document. So your risk management file is typically going to be a virtual file, just like your design history file. And you're going to have one big folder for each product family. And that's going to be the risk management file for that product family. And you're going to update it periodically as you get new production and post-production data collection and post-market surveillance. And that information goes into that risk management file. But the part that you provide to the notified, to the notified body is supposed to be a summary. So typically, people will give them the risk management report not the whole entire file, and the risk management report needs to be written in such a way that it summarizes all the activities that were done so it qualifies as a stat and you don't have to give them all the other documents too and have another round of review, which will cost you more time than money. Next, you have four different types of risk analysis. Where do they go? Well, the design FMEA, if you do a design FMEA, that's going to go with um, in that risk management report, in that type of risk analysis is what we're talking about for the design of the device. So that's going to meet the Annex 2 requirement. I think it's um, Annex 2, Article 5. Uh, they're looking for a benefit risk analysis as part of that. So that's got to be in there. You also have a process risk analysis. That goes in a different section. So the process risk analysis goes with your manufacturing data, your process validation, your manufacturing work instructions, your in-process inspection instructions, final inspection instructions. All that stuff goes in there along with your risk management plan and your process FMEA. The next item is your software analysis. If you have software embedded in your IVD product, and a lot of them are digital devices now, there are even some software as a medical device that are in vitro diagnostics, believe it or not. Those, that part of it goes in a software section of your technical file. In the last section, usability, there is a usability section of your technical file where you're going to be talking about use-related risks, and you want to put your use-related risk analysis there. So you have four different types of risk analysis, four different places to put them. Next, we have an outline of the risk management activities. So we've broken down the design process the way you normally would, where you have five different stages. Number one is design plan, design inputs, design freeze at the end of the outputs, they've all been finalized, your verification and validation activities, and finally design release. And for each one of those five phases, we've organized the different 
risk management activities that need to be put there and reference the clause from ISO 14971 that gets covered. Next, we've got production and post-production data collection requirements, and we've explained where those requirements are in the IVDR, and we've given you a list of what things need to be included and given the references so you can go gather that information. But there's even some guidance in there. A lot of people don't collect enough of the right information in their production. So they might just select rejects. That's not enough. <laughs> There's a lot more information you need to collect from production than just the number of rejects you had. Uh, number two, you've got the production and you got production and post-production requirements. The post-production requirements are your post-market surveillance plan and your PMPF plan that's required for IDA, IVDs. So that's also covered in this blog article. And last but not least, we have the links to resources. And I think we have seven different uh, links that are provided at the end. And those links are going to give you the, the standard, the guidance document, a global harmonization task force guidance document, the IBDR link. And then there's, I think, two other requirements in there. One is uh, maybe for uh, IEC 62366. And I forgot what the seventh one is. Anyway, those are all covered in there. And just as one more aside, if you're interested in risk management and you're updating your risk management file for the IVDR or the MDR or any product, um, we are updating our risk management webinars. So we had two webinars, one on 14971, another one on ISO TR 24971, which is the guidance document. We're re-recording those and expanding them. So the new version is going to be four webinars instead of two webinars. It's part one of two, part two of two for 14 and 71, and then part one of two and two of two for the guidance document because they're both that long and we need to cover it with that kind of level of detail to make sure people really have the guidance that they need and training they need on how to do risk management. So I hope that helps you. I hope you're interested in this, in this blog article. A lot of time went into it and we provided a lot of links. But this is a little sneak preview, and I'm going to put it up above um, as the video explaining what the, the whole article is about. But the sneak preview will go up on YouTube today. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.